the formation skanda volume 8 chapter 5 sutra ananda when the good person is who is cultivating samadhi has put an end to the thinking skanda he is ordinarily free of dreaming and ego thinking so he stays the same whether in wakefulness or in sleep his mind is aware clear empty and still like a cloudless sky devoid of any cause and impressions he contemplates everything in the world the mountains the rivers and the earth as reflections in a mirror appearing without attachment and vanishing without any trace they are simply received and reflected he does away with all his old habits and only the essential truth remains commentary ananda when the good person which a good person is being referred to here the good person is the one who is developing the skill of directing the hearing inward to hear the inherent nature he is cultivating the great suragama samadhi and who exactly is that person he is simply whoever cultivates the good person does not refer to any particular individual is not an exclusive title if you cultivate then it refers to you if i cultivate it refers to me if he or she cultivates it refers to him or her everyone has a share in it that is you have a share if you cultivate but not if you don't it's completely fair that good person is the one who is cultivating somebody cultivation refers to diligently sitting in meditation not to eating all day long you should sit in meditation listen to the sutras and study the buddha dharma what should you cultivate somebody power how do you cultivate somebody power sit in meditation Samadhi arises from precepts, so the first step is to hold the precepts. Once you take the precepts, you must hold the precepts and never indulge in sexual misconduct. Men and women should observe propriety, propriety as Lord Kuan Yu did. He was faithful to his wife for all his life. He never drew near another woman. Did you see his ruddy face? It testifies to his magnanimous proper energy. Now that you have taken the precepts, I want to tell you that you must remain faithful to your spouse. You may not get involved in the extra material, um, extra marital affairs and go looking for partners everywhere. Don't break the rules. You should accord with propriety and be open and upright in your conduct. Only then will you attain samadhi. After taking the precepts, you will develop samadhi. From samadhi, wisdom will develop. How do people get possessed by demons? If you have a little samadhi and your wisdom is insufficient, you may encounter demonic obstacles. If your skill in samadhi is deep enough, you will be able to conquer the demons. January 1983 If you want to have a proper samadhi, holding the precepts is certainly a prerequisite. It sets a foundation. Once we have a firm foundation, we can erect pillars on top of it. The pillars represent samadhi and the foundation represents the precepts we must strictly uphold the precepts this is very very important if you don't set a good foundation then the pillars will not stand and your samadhi will be deviant what is meant by wisdom once the pillars are erected and the walls are put in the house can be built What's the, use, what's the use of a house? It can be a place where people to bow to the Buddhas and to hear lectures on the sutras. 
we can teach people to change their phones and renew themselves. That's the function of wisdom. Precepts are the substance. Samadhi is the appearance, and wisdom is the function. We should be very clear about this. If you lack precepts, then you won't have any samadhi. Without samadhi, you cannot develop wisdom. Likewise, if you don't set the foundation well, the pillars you erect will not be stable. The walls will cave in, and the house will collapse and be useless. Therefore, the three non-outflow studies of precepts, samadhi, and wisdom are all indispensable. We should pay close attention to this. He has put an end to the thinking skanda. Among the five skandhas of form, feeling, thinking, formations, and consciousness, the thinking skanda is destroyed in his mind's interaction. With the thinking skanda, he has conquered it. Having broken through the thinking skanda, he is ordinarily free of dreaming and idle thinking. The state he has reached is not a state of not eating or not sleeping. In this state, one still sleeps and eats, but no longer dreams. Confucius once said, "Alas, I'm getting decrepit. It's been so long since." I saw the dark of troll in a dream. This was the dark who protected the king Wu in the troll dynasty. Why didn't Confucius have any dreams? Probably it was because by that time in his life, Confucius had partially broken through the thinking skanda. However, since he was not aware of it, he wondered. Hey, how come I don't dream any more? Oh, I must be getting old. Confucius had some skill in cultivation, and it's likely that he had destroyed the thinking skanda without knowing it. He didn't understand, so he decided that he no longer had dreams because he was old. Once the thinking skanda is destroyed, dreams are gone. So he stays the same whether in wakefulness or in sleep. If you have read classical Chinese literature, you may know a story called "The Warlord Defeats Duan at Yan," which relates how a warlord named Cheng married a girl named Jiang. She gave birth to Lord Chuang and Gong Shu Duan. Lord Chuang was called "Born Upon Waking" because his mother was asleep. When she started to give birth to him, and when she wake woke up, he was born. So that cultivator, the state of wakefulness is the same as the state of sleep. In other words, when he's asleep, it's as if he were awake. He can be like that because he is not upside down and thus has no dream thinking. When you have broken through the thinking skanda. You can live upside down, dream thinking far behind, and ultimately attain the state of nibbana. If you haven't broken through the thinking skanda, this upside downness will not go away. You should pay attention to this point.